This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. There he is. That's Stephen Kravitz. Guy we love to talk to. You're so much fun and you're so good to talk to and we have a nice conversation and so on. I was just I was just thinking I was uh, I was uh, watching Letterman on YouTube and uh-huh. uh, the couple of times that he was able on Stupid Petrix to have a talking dog. Right. You know, one said Obama and the other one, oh, really? the other one said, "I love you." And very, you could hear him say it. He, I love you, you know. So, and it reminded me of uh, the the classic joke. I think. Let me let me get rid of something here. The classic joke. I do believe. Uh, if we're going to talk about classic jokes, I have to get all this stuff out of the way of the. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, the, the classic joke. I think always is. A guy walks into a bar with a talking dog, right? Okay. Talking dog jokes. Do you know any talking dog jokes? No. You want to hear the best talking dog joke I ever heard? Lay it on me. Guy walks into a bar. He says to the bartender, "We give me a free drink if my dog can talk. He says, your dog can talk? He says, uh, yeah, my dog can talk. Uh, and uh, he says, okay, make your dog talk. And the dog says, okay, uh, um, uh, uh, who's the current president of the United States? And the dog goes, Joe Biden. He says, that's amazing. Your dog can talk? He says, yeah, the dog can talk. He says, would you do me a favor? He says, here's 20 bucks. Have the dog go over to my competitor across the street. Okay. And have him go in and order a drink. And then after he drinks the drink, say, this drink stinks. Okay. okay. So the guy says, okay. So he gives the dog he gives the dog the 20 bucks so the dog can buy the drinks, right? Right. Dog puts it in his mouth, walking across the street. The dog doesn't come back. They don't understand what's happening. He goes out to the middle of the street, and there in the middle of the street is his dog humping another dog. (laughs) And he yells out to the dog, why are you doing that? And the dog yells back, well, I never had 20 bucks before. Good night. The other one, the classic one, is when he goes into a bar, and he says, uh, what's on the top of a building and the dog goes roof he says who's the greatest baseball player of all time he goes Ruth and finally the bartender throws them both out on the street and the dog looks at the guy and goes what it was DiMaggio you know but you don't know you don't know any talking dog jokes no do you know any jokes because I'm, I'm very bad at jokes. I, I once Somebody can tell me a joke, and then I'll go tell it to somebody else, and then it disappears from my mind. Right. You know, they're I like... Do vi- not, I do not know any, any jokes. You don't know any... You don't know any per se jokes. Wow. See, I mean... Two, you, two, two, Jew, two Jews walk into a bar. Yeah. And they buy it. Yes, I know that. I was going to say that, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's that's uh, the. That's my entire repertoire of jokes. Of now, jokes. Well, we could say gentlemen. you make up your own jokes. By me? You make up your own jokes. Yeah. But in your case, I mean, if I remember your act correctly, and I think I do, and I have a copy of it here actually, when you were at one of my shows. Really? But yeah, I should put it up and stuff sometime so people can see it. Uh, it is up somewhere. I don't know where you go for it. But anyway, uh, if you go to Gabnet uh, TV, it's there. 
Okay. Really? Yeah. Uh, any on, on Roku. Uh, uh, it, it, the, the fact of the matter is, you don't tell jokes as much as you do a routine. Right. I tell a story. You tell a story, yeah. Right. Uh, and and I, I think some, you know a lot of comedians today don't tell jokes. You know who told jokes? Henny Youngman told jokes. Right. You, you know, uh, they go up on stage and they do one joke after another. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think. Who, we had a modern version of that in uh, in what's his name? Um, oh God, I'm trying to think which comedian it was who just told jokes. It was one joke unrelated to the joke before it. Even right. Stephen Wright is one of them. Stephen Wright was traditional that way. He told jokes. And uh, Rodney Dangerfield oh, yeah. told jokes. Right. You know, in other words, it was one joke after another. It wasn't one thread of something like, well, you know, the funny thing about eating dinner out, and then you right. do a bunch of dinner out stuff material. Right. But the traditional telling a joke. And uh, Honey, Henny, I don't know how a guy like Henny Youngman remembered that many jokes. Okay. And especially, didn't he borrow jokes? No, Burl stole jokes. Oh, there you go. Burl That's did. That's right. But um, uh, Milton Burl, folks, and for those of you who are too old to remember that sort of thing, Milton Burl uh, used to do that. But Henny Youngman wasn't a very good comic. I didn't never thought he was terribly funny. I thought what made him funny is he was so bad. Right. You know? And, right. And so after a while, he became a national treasure because he was so bad, not because he was so good. Right. And then his, his wife died. And his big line always was, take my wife, please. Right, and right. And he, he kept using it. Hey, I'm in show business. Fuck it. It's a good piece of material. I'm going to use it. Right. I asked uh, Slayton when his wife died, uh, did he get rid of all the wife material? And he said he kind of started to get rid of it, but he couldn't get rid of it completely because it was a big part of his act. Right. You know, my wife does this. My wife says that. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So it rather he just would do the material rather than go up on stage and say, "Well, my wife died, but let me tell you about her while she was still alive." Right, you know? right, right, right. That right. would kill the crowd. Yeah, opening up with "My wife died," probably not a good start. And <laughs> bring my wife back, please. Right. <laughs> just doesn't seem to work. Uh, so uh, how how is that up there? It, you know what it is down here. We're getting, my eyes are burning. Been burning in the last couple of days. They burn all the time, but they're burning more than usual. You know what from? From the what? The California fires. Are you serious? All that smoke has gotten out here and is permeating Manhattan. I can look out my window and there is a haze of smoke. That's how bad the wildfires are out in California. The whole West Coast. Yeah. Are you getting it up there? Are they saying you're getting it up there? No. No. He's up in Massachusetts, folks. No. Yeah, no. Okay. How's life going for you in Massachusetts? It's okay. It's okay. What, what you know do, what I mean? You, you seem to have your reservations. I mean, would you rather be in San Francisco? Oh, yes. Okay. Why? Well, San Francisco is such a great city. They say it isn't anymore. Yeah, they say it's horrible. They say it's pretty horrible now. And, right. and I mean, Bubbles, when I talk to him, always says to me, well, you, you wouldn't recognize it now. You wouldn't like what you see. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's that bad. So, uh, you know, you got homeless people in the, uh, sleeping in the streets. Uh, right. You, you know, you've got, you got the COVID thing hit there pretty hard, uh, although it got better. But they just say, and it's terribly expensive to live there because really all expensive. well, all the people came up from uh, Silicon Valley, right? Because all the companies moved their offices out of Sil. Well, they had them still in Silicon Valley, but they had satellites in San Francisco. You remember where okay. we used to do our radio show in the right. Furniture Mart, that building? Remember this terrible studio we had, the old one, right. this really small one. That's now uh, Twitter. That whole yeah, building, right? that whole building is Twitter. 
So you get like, uh, you know, a couple of thousand people moving up from the South Bay, maybe 10,000, to work at Twitter, right. and they're going to look for apartments, and those people have a lot of money. Right, right. Right. So, there's, there's so, so the landlords see them coming and they raise the rent. So now to get right. an apartment, and you know, I used to pay, uh, what was it? I used to pay about originally in the marina, I pay about eight hundred bucks a month. Right. When, I, when I finally left, it was like up to a thousand for one of my apartments and sixteen hundred for the other. Okay. Today, it'd be eight thousand dollars. Oh yeah. You know, so I mean, you couldn't afford to live in San Francisco. No. No. And neither no. could I. Yeah. I couldn't afford to live in New York. Uh, well, you know, we still have a problem with this apartment. Who knows? I mean, we may we, we haven't been paying rent for eight years. If they ever try to collect it, we're out of here. We can't afford right. it. You know. Uh, they they won't. I'm sure. Uh, right. But uh, it's it's you know it's still a possibility, and we think about it, and we go, and then how do we move all this stuff out? We probably just leave it, and say fuck it, you know. Right, 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 we're, right. We're gonna have a lot of electronic equipment. Um, so you know, I mean, it it, it really is. Uh, um, but it, it, if we had to move, I don't think we could move back into New York City. Right. You know, Mar Marjorie, but we have to kind of because Marjorie's still working. Uh, oh really? Yeah, yeah, and we'd have to use her income as proof that we were capable of paying rent. Right. You know, our, right, com right, our right. combined incomes are okay. You know. Right. But I mean, it's just where do we move? You know, and do we want to move? Do we want to stay here? Does she want to leave there, sell her place, get a little place upstate? You know. Right. And live as hermits. So, and I don't know if I want to do that. That doesn't sound, you know. I would love to live in the country, you know. God, you're a city boy. Not really, I'll tell you. Uh, whenever I was in any way in the country, I loved it. I just, I just loved the the casualness of it all. I could live without a city. I'm not. I I don't take advantage of the city. What do I do here? You know. Right. I for a year and, and a quarter, I never even left the apartment for crying out loud. Really? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, very rarely did I ever go out. I went out for emergencies. I went out, let's see here, uh, COVID didn't hit till right after my last cancer procedure. Okay. okay. Which I was very lucky, because if I had waited a week, I wouldn't have been able to get it right. for a year. So uh, I got it, and, and uh, then after that, everything shut down. Well, as my father used to say it shut up tighter than a cow's ass at fly time. I never knew what that meant, but it seemed <laughs> like a funny term. Yeah. Uh, and it was that way, it was terrible here. And uh, I just never went out. So I never took advantage of the city. And now that I do go out, I really, I take a walk down to the Harlem Mirror here and back and that's it. You know, I don't even, if I don't have to, I don't even go below 110th Street. You know, so uh, it's, uh, I don't know that I take advantage of New York any longer. Right. I don't know that I would, I would miss it. I think every night when I went to sleep and I heard crickets instead of kids blowing fireworks up, right. uh, I think I might say this is the nice life here. You know, so who knows? It's pretty quiet where you are, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So you're no, you, you're used to the quiet. Yes. In fact, I mean, I grew, I grew up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I grew up here. Now, now I'm, I'm back. Is your family happy to have you there? Most of the time. Most of the <laughs> most of the time. I don't know about all the time. Yeah, yeah. So. So what do you got? Uh, cousins and you have brothers and sisters. I got brothers. No you got, sisters. You got brothers. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, were yeah. you were you the youngest? Middle. Middle. Oh, so what's it like? They say they say that uh, destiny is the order in which you're born. That the that the oldest uh, always has a certain personality. The middle has a certain personality, and the youngest has a certain personality, and it's okay. all dictated by birth order. Well, I have one older brother and one younger brother. 
Okay. Now, my, my older brother mm -hmm. is the golden child. He's the golden child? How do you, what do you mean by golden child? Well, they lost two before he survived. Oh, they lost Good. two before he survived. Right, So he and he's also the firstborn, and he's firstborn male. So he's the golden child. Got to be, because they go, hey, we lost two, and now this one survived. God right. bless him. But they and managed. Come, what's what's in, like, What's interesting is they lost two, then right. they finally had one that took, and then they did it twice again. Yeah. But I'm like fifteen months behind my older brother, almost like an afterthought. It, you know. In other words, yeah. in other words, they had babies. Boom, boom, boom. Well, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, well, fifteen yeah. months is a, is a, is pretty close to the first one. Right, right, wait, right. Wait, and, wait. and then my see now my younger brother is three years. You're you're younger. Oh, you have a younger brother. Yeah, you're the middle brother. Okay, right. 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 Okay. So, so he's the baby. Okay. And then there's the golden child and the baby, and then there's me. Y you. You know. So I learned that negative attention was still attention. I see. And it was intense and it was immediate. Do you so, think do you think that was any reason why you became a comedian? Because you craved attention? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I yeah. never thought about that. You know what I mean? But I do like to also very much engage with the audience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I like to not only tell stories, but I like to play with the audience. Well, well, did you find as a middle child, in order to get attention, you had to do something like performing? You had to kind of get their attention through some kind of action, as it were? Yes. Yes. And how would that play itself out? Well, let's say I did something bad, and my mom would say, go stand in the corner. And I would say, no. <laughs> and she'd say, go stand in the corner. And I'd say, no. So she'd go and she'd empty out the waste paper basket, clean it out, pick me up, and put me in it and say, now, stay in the corner. <laughs> That's not exactly child abuse, is it? No. No, not child abuse at all. Uh, <laughs> now, when she threw shoes... Here's something I learned yeah. when I was a teenager. Okay. And when she would hit me, which was very rarely, but on special occasions, it, it, it didn't hurt anymore. You know, I was like 15 and she would hit me and it was like, it didn't hurt. So never laugh at somebody who is hitting you. Oh, I see. Okay. You see, because she snapped and she threw every shoe in the house at me <laughs> and she bit my arm. Wow, you must have been a bad kid. Or I guess I needed a lot of attention. Well, no, an infuriating kid. Oh, so you, but you do think that the reason, like when you, let's say she would make you stand in the corner and she would put you in a wastebasket or she would do any of those things. Did you feel satisfied by that? Because she was paying attention? God, I feel like a shrink here. God. Yeah, I feel like I'm being psychoanalyzed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I don't know. Also, my mother passed away when I was pretty young. I was, I was still a teenager. Wow. She was only uh, 47. Hmm. What'd she die of? Uh, cancer. At 47? Right. Oh, God. Well, that's got to be devastating to you. Yes. Because I'm sure that in spite of the fact that she spanked you and put you in a garbage can, uh, you still <laughs> it sounds like you still loved her. Oh, very much. Yeah, yeah. Very much. My parents, I'm trying to think of the way they, they when I was bad, what, what they would do. My father never would hit me. He didn't no. believe in that. Didn't believe in no. it. Never spanked me. Uh, but you know what it was? My father was German. And when he got mad, he had this very loud voice. 
Really? And it scared the shit out of me. You know. See, my father and, would just stare at me. But he would yell at me. And, uh, you know, Bolo, because that was my nickname. Bolo, don't do that. You know. Right. And I would pay attention to that. That was that was as bad as a spanking for crying out loud, you know. My my dad never ever ever laid a hand on us. But what we did is, me and my younger brother shared a room growing up. Mm-hmm. And you know how kids are. Sometimes they make noise. Yeah. And it would wake him up, and he'd have to you know get up early for, to go to work. So what he'd do is he'd open up the door, mm-hmm. take off his belt. Right? Yeah. Fold it in half and snap it. You know how you snap a belt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then hang it on the doorknob. <laughs> and go back to his room. Wow. wow. Now, and it worked every time. Well, you know, I mean, I think the reason why I especially didn't like my father yelling at me was that I didn't want, I love my father a lot. And right. I didn't want his disapproval. I mean, right. di- this. And I think if you're a good parent, you don't have to spank a kid. You just have to put that kid in fear of your disapproval. In other right. words, I got him. I always have stuff getting in the way of the picture here, and my my cursor was there. Uh, uh, you know, you get this 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 uh, feeling that that the best way to 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 raise a kid is by making them respect you enough that they don't want your disapproval. Right. That that's the worst thing that can happen. You right. Know, and I lost my father. I was pretty young. I was in my 20s when he went. Right. He went at uh, 59. You know. So I'm sitting here at 81 going, God. You know. Well, I, Alex, one side of my family dies very young. Yeah. Like my mother's father died when she was two. My mother's mother died when she was 10. My mother died when she was 47. My nephew died when he was 22, right? Wow, what did he die? That's one side, that's one. What did, he, what did he die of? He had a heart attack in his sleep. At 22? Yeah. Boy, he must have been doing a lot of coke. No, <laughs> Jeez. They did, they did, that's what I thought. But they did a talk screen and he was completely clean. No. Oh, God. So one side of my family dies very young. Yeah. The other side of the family just won't fucking die. Yeah. I mean, my grandparents were married 81 years. She died, she was 104. Oh, God. He died at 102. My father died at 92. So, like I said, one side of the family dies very young. Yeah. One side of the family just won't fucking die. I, I, I remember something about you, and it's vague, so you're going to have to fill me in, but you always seem to be, uh, always thought a lot about your mother dying young. I think there was something yeah. about a tombstone that had to be put up or something. That's when I, when I was a finalist in the comedy competition in 85. Me and my brothers pitched in and put a headstone on a grave. And the reason we, and it was so important is I was back there one winter and she only had a plaque and there was a lot of snow on the ground and I couldn't find her grave and I kind of freaked out. Yeah. So that's when we made a pact. We would we would put a headstone on the grave. You know how bad a son I am? I haven't, put, I haven't put a tombstone up on my mother's grave yet. Really? Yeah. I've talked to a lot of people and they say they haven't either. You know? Right. Uh, uh, because they think feel that tombstones are unnecessary that it's it's basically garish right it, you know it, it it's a pronouncement here lies so and so well what's lying there a bunch of bones and right. decaying and flesh and so on uh, that uh, you know Marjorie my wife says she wants to cremate me I want to be cremated and I I don't well how do you know I mean if there is an afterlife and you get up there and you're just a pile of ashes I mean what are they going to say I'm sorry we can't do anything with you here if you if you at least came here in one piece <laughs> I don't think it works like that yeah well I uh, yeah I really don't know and uh, who knows is there an afterlife well we can discuss that on another occasion because we're slowly running out of time here 
Really? Uh, but it, yeah, I talk with you and it just goes on and on and on. And I, I don't do this long in time with anybody. In fact, last week, I decided not to run my show. I just put your interview up and it right. got more viewers than any of my shows. Really? Yes. So I may just put this one up by itself as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So. How do you like that? How do you like that? Uh, anyway. Maybe we could call this the Cretching Hour. Uh, well, no, I mean, he, he, we learned a lot about you today. You yeah. Know? And and it's all because we just get, get conversant and talk and right. so on, you know. Right, and, uh, right, 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 yeah. right. I, I, I was the oldest child in my family. I was also oh, the really? I was also the youngest and the middle child. You're an only child. Nah, I was an only child, which yeah. my, my wife hates. She always goes, "You're an only child. You're spoiled." Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Are you jealous of that fact? Right. You know, does that bother you that I was an how only many, child? How many siblings does she have? She had two. I, I I think she has a brother. That I know. Right. Uh, and uh, I don't think she's ever mentioned anybody else. But I, I'll have to ask her. I didn't ask. That's how much I care about other people. You know. Right. I mean, I'm living with right. somebody, and I don't know how many. But you know, I do know her brother because he's been here. He's come to see her. So right. I, you know, I know she has a brother. You know. Right. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Hi. This is a, this is so much fun, and and neither of us have anything to do this time of the day anyway. So no, not really. Any important things you're going to do today? I think there's a nap in my future. See, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's called the new segment is now called Getting Older with Steve Kravitz. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. We'll see you Thanks, next folks. time. Bye bye. This is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's Steve Kravitz. You know, we always like, we always say it, and we're, it's true. We really love Steve Kravitz. He's just, I love talking with him because it's just a, a conversation with two people trying to just find out more about each other. And uh, he was always one of my favorites when he was on the air with me in San Francisco. And uh, it was pretty terrific, pretty terrific. We have a panel waiting. We'll get to them in just a second. Uh, I went to the eye doctor today. Uh, they're going to do my lids. If you have seen pictures of people who've had their lids done, it's pretty gruesome. Uh, they uh, they go up here and they they lift this eyelid. See, what happens is, my eyes have started drooping and they droop you notice how they droop halfway like if you look half of my eyeball is covered by my eye that droops and so that kind of cuts out a certain amount of vision for me um and so he's got to do that and the bottoms and then after he does it i've got to put ice on my eyes for two days 15 minutes on one eye, then 15 minutes on the next eye, and 15 minutes on the next eye, and 15 minutes on the next eye. And then whatever I'm doing, I can be at the computer, boom, 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 boom. Um, but I've got to keep ice on it, okay? And then i got to sleep on my back for three days. And believe me, I'm not doing a show, <laughs> okay? And the reason being that I will, uh, uh, I will... Number one, I for the first couple of days, I'm probably I'm not going to feel great. I'm not going to feel terrible, he says, but I'm not going to feel great. And uh, for the next week or so, I am going to look like somebody beat the crap out of me. Now I figure after about three days, I think this is going to happen on a Wednesday. It's, it's September 28th. It's a long way away, but I have this for September 28th, and. Um, uh, uh, so I probably wouldn't do anything for the next three nights. And then the following Monday, I might do one of my little shows. But you'll probably see me with dark glasses on. Because you will not want to see what I look like. Okay. But he says after about, se uh, he said, eight days to, to, to two weeks, uh, all, all the bruising should go away. So, well, that, that, but that's a couple of months away. So we're, we're, that's, a, that's in the future. Uh, but I'm going to do it. What the hell? Bite the bullet. Do it. And I, I'll look a little bit better, but basically I'm not doing the bags, so th that won't go away. 
Uh, but um, it will kind of make my eyes open more and not look as tired all the time. So anyway, and it, it's not cosmetic. This is not done for cosmetic reasons. In fact, Medicare covers it. It's called pitosis or something like that. I, I don't have the exact name right here now. Uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a very common uh, affliction. He says he's done 2,500 of these. And uh, I always like to talk to this guy because he's my, he's, he's, he's the guy I go to for, for, for the cosmetic things and also for just things like this. He's a surgeon. He's an eye surgeon. And I like him a lot. And I won't say who he is, uh, but I will say that uh, he has a relative, his brother-in-law was one of the biggies in the Trump organization, which is terrible because this guy is the most lefty, he's probably to the left of me, okay, and it, <laughs> it always bothered him, but he's a great guy, and I trust him, and it looks like it'll be okay. Anyway, I think it's time for us to admit all the people that are waiting, which is only four people. We don't know how many more are going to join us. And I think we have somebody tonight who isn't normally here. Wait a minute. Let me hold on Sorry. and uh, bring this into uh, a gallery mode so that they all look right. And uh, hello, Matt. How are you? <laughs> hey, Alex. Welcome back, Matt. Thank you very much. Where are you calling from again? Just uh, getting unpacked and everything in Seattle. Seattle. Okay. Yeah. What happened to uh, uh, Charlene Martinez? Is Oh, yeah, you were moving is what it was the last time we talked. And um, yeah. they, you were going to Seattle, which is a nice town. Yeah. You know, It's very nice here. I've been unpacking it ever since I last spoke with you. It's lots of, co lots you know, of coffee. Exhausting. Up, lots of coffee up there. You know. Yeah. Why did yeah, you yeah, decide yeah. on Seattle? Uh, you know, my first criteria was no state income tax oh, because okay. this is my this is my last move, and um, yeah. And then I just started researching it more and more, and it's like, why the hell didn't I go there in the first place? Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. It's really, really beautiful here. Yeah, I, I, there's uh, there's some the the water uh, is just like two miles away, where you can just hike around, bike yeah. around. And it's just incredible. Is it smoky up there? No, I heard you mention something about smoke from California, but I, I looked out my that. window today. I could not see downtown. Okay, that's how wow. bad it was. Okay, uh, it is. Uh, it, 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 it. In fact, let me turn on the air conditioning a little more. The, the fact is that it's been terrible. Just been terrible, and my eyes have been burning a lot. But I looked out tonight, and they didn't seem like they were burning as much. And I looked out, and it seems like I could then see, like, the Empire State Building. But it was so bad here, that, and it was all the smoke coming from the West Coast. You know, so it's not been, wow. not been fun. Hello to Charlie hmm. Wallace. We haven't seen Charlie in a couple of days. Charlie um, is out there uh, uh, doing the umpiring thing, right? Rained out tonight. You got rained out tonight? Yeah. Oh, gee. I, so I have to pray for rain is what I have to do, right? <laughs> well, lately, you don't have to pray much. It's been raining like an SLB here in Texas this year. Oh, Send really? In California, we need it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's terrible out in California. Uh, and uh, hello to Charlene. We haven't seen Charlene in a while. And hello to Tony. Hi. How you doing, Tony? Tony got a haircut. He got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? I did. <laughs> Yeah. The last time we saw him, he kind of looked like Gumby. Yeah, wow. even my haircut of guy, the uh, Zach, the old man, he goes, oh, my God, <laughs> he cut me off pretty good. Yeah, well, you know, when's the last time you got a haircut? Well, that's what he said. I said, Zach, you weren't here that day, so I'm guessing it was at least two months ago. Oh, you really, so you did get one a while ago. Yeah. I see. My wife does mine, started doing mine when we, when we had the, um, the COVID deal. And I went out and got one of those hair cutters, right? Which were very hard to lay your hands on at that time. They were yep. buying them up like crazy. Okay. But I got one and she tried it once and it looked okay. So I said, do it again. And now that I can go back to my barber, I'm not going back to him. I, I have no reason to. Come on, with my hair, what do I need to do? Okay, what do I need to do? You can comb your hair with a wash rag. That's Shine correct. it up. Yeah, That's your correct. Just buff it. Yeah. 
Yeah, buff it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I forgot, Matt. What do you do for a, for a career? Uh, I just got a job. I came up. I came here without a job, and oh, really? uh, I found one. I started a couple of days ago, really? doing some uh, IT support. Oh, I was, gonna, I was going to so. say, how is it at Starbucks? You know, but <laughs> it's really weird here. I mean. I should say weird. It, it's just so different. And uh, and and I was at this uh, meetup, and I was talking with some people, and I said uh, something about is uh, how long uh, I said how easy is it to get pot around here? And they all looked at me like I was crazy. Oh yeah, like, you're Are nuts. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> because apparently this was the first state that had it. I think uh, I think it was maybe maybe it was the first or maybe it was the second. It could it was either Portland, it was either Oregon or Seattle. Yeah, well, these guys told me it was Seattle or okay. that it was uh, Washington. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently you can just go anywhere and this just is, walk out there with a joint. There are, yeah, but there are stores also where you can buy the stuff, is aren't there? As well. That's what I'm told. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, but, uh, you go into those places. They got everything. They got the they got the pot and they got the gummies mm -hmm. and they got the you know yeah. the the vapor I, vape stuff and they got a, they got it all. Any way they can I'm get it in of, your body, they do it. I'm thinking of revisiting my childhood and uh, start smoking pot again. You know, I saw a thing on, on C I saw a thing on CBS tonight where they were doing a report on kids who are accidentally eating these medicinal oh. gummies because they, you know, they come in a little tin and they look like candy, and a kid sees them and he just downs them, you know. And this mother talks about having to take her kid to the to the hospital and. Uh, they, 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 they're doing the whole report saying these kids have been overdosing on marijuana. And uh, I'm, I started to think, have any of you ever overdosed on marijuana? <laughs> what, uh, what, what is overdosing on marijuana? You eat a whole bunch of famous Amos cookies? I can understand where the kid is a little freaked out and you know is a little agitated from it and perhaps needs some kind of trank to mitigate it, no matter how many of them the kid ate. But the idea that, you know, to, to broadcast this and say overdosed is, mm. I, I don't know if you can overdose on pot. Like it's heroin or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of things you can overdose on, you know. Now, and, did you and, say it was a child? Yeah, it was a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, and they say yeah, a maybe lot. Maybe childs or possible. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's a question of is their life in danger because they overdosed from pot? No. Yeah. Oh. You know, they said, "Oh, well, then the kid went home and was okay." <laughs> you know, of course the kid went home and was okay. <laughs> it, it, the kid yeah. peed a couple of times. It was out of his system, <laughs> and you know, um, you know, he, he maybe you know couldn't get a job at a Christian camp, but it couldn't pass the P <laughs> test, but you know. Um, but it, it just got me that, that that was the way they were reporting it. And how far behind are they on the curve on this? You know, uh, I, and, and the mother, to her credit, said, it's my fault. I should have I should have put this somewhere where the kid wouldn't find them. Obviously, she's not in California. They would have arrested her for child endangerment. Really? Yeah. yeah I mean, she said, I, I shouldn't have left it out. I shouldn't have left it where the kid would have found it. And it's my fault. You know, and I thought that was wonderful of her to say. I, I think it's a good idea, too, but California screwed up. So, Well, that's one of the reasons I'm not going back there anytime yeah, well, soon. Can... Yes, Alan. I, I, did anybody see the exchange yesterday between Dr. Fauci and the idiot optimal yes. Rand Paul. Yeah. That was great. Well, I think Rand Paul, anytime he goes before that committee, knows that, that uh, 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 I mean, Fauci knows that anytime he goes before that committee, Rand Paul's going to do some kind of publicity, exactly. publicity trick. And uh, I think he's just sick of it. And he just let him have it. Good. You just you, you know, you're calling me irresponsible. You know, are you you're telling me that I'm spreading lies? You're spreading lies and dangerous ones at that. You know, what surprised me? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. What, what you're saying, surprised Matt? me was Mitch McConnell, the head of the Senate on the on the Republican side, announced yesterday that everybody ought to get COVID shots. Hmm. So okay. it's about 
time. It's a, you know, a little late, but you know, I think what they're seeing is a lot of Republicans did not get them and they're dying and they're losing their base. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, Matt, you said mm-hmm. you were going to say something. I was just, every time I see this uh, attack on Fauci, I think of what you guys all talk about. What the fuck are they talking? Why are they doing this? What is this strategy? It's, it's a pointless goal. I don't understand it at all. By the I way, I have some, I have somebody here that's trying to get on, named uh, Connor Gender Rocks. <laughs> Do you think it's anybody we know? I don't know. Uh, John's already here. Larkin's already here. Larkin's already here. <laughs> Tony's already here. And yeah. the car thief is already here. So yeah. Well, uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna remove him from the. Well, I just won't answer it. Okay, I'll let him sit there for a while. Waste I watched the show last time. night after I got home from San Francisco. Yeah. And talking wait, wait, about... Wait a minute, you bring it, up a subject, and we're discussing it, and then also, you automatically bring up another subject while we're I'm still discussing today. the subject you brought up. Okay. Can, do, you, do you want to move on to another subject? Is that what you want to do? No, oh, no, I... Yeah. yeah, I just I wanted to bring up something funny that happened yesterday that I think you'll find funny. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, you, so go ahead. It's your show. Go ahead. I'll. I'll after you notice that? Did you notice that? Where'd yeah. you get that idea? I don't know. It, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, Matt, it, it you know I mean what he did uh, was terrible. I mean, uh, and and the the kind of thing that people are are uh, kind of. What can I call it? the kind of, of, of thing they're they're saying to their public is, don't get the shots. They're dangerous. You know, they, I read a thing tonight which was quite interesting. Uh, I can't remember what state it was, but it was one of these states that has had a a, a situation. Oh, oh, this is uh, oh, uh, this is another guy named a nigger hater. Ooh, is he just black? I'm guessing he's white. <laughs> yep. Yep, now I'm going to go remove, and of course he's I mean, going to say something? here, and I'm going to say report to Zoom, Absolutely. and then it's going to ask me what I want to do, and I'm going to say, uh, 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 let's see here, offensive, illegal, or abusive, uninvited guest, Absolutely. trademark infringement, impersonation, <clears throat> I would say offensive and illegal, okay, yeah. all right, and we will send that. And there it says done, okay? And then we are going to, uh, I think, uh, we'll also remove uh, Connor Gendrox. Gendrox. Uh, And I'll remove that, and they of course send me another note. It always goes up right where everybody is talking. Uh, And I will just say abusive, okay? And submit. Okay, there we go, done. Okay, folks. Uh, we got rid of, I think. I don't know. In fact, I don't think they can call back now. I, I'm actually surprised that Zoom doesn't have some software that stops the racist comments like that. Well, that yeah, a name like that shouldn't even be allowed to go through. Yeah, you know? I don't mean the name. I mean the racist. Part. Yeah, I mean they can, they can try. I'm just <clears throat> not going to let them through. The only thing is, is that it comes up on my screen. Right. And then that goes out on the air, and it's. Uh, I wish I could it would come up on a on the screen off more to the side, but anyway. Uh, but they don't seem to be calling back. Uh, no, anyways, I was saying that you know, uh, uh, guys like like uh, 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 what's his name, uh, Rand, Rand Paul, are, are spreading misinformation. Oh, and the, this, what I saw was that uh, a doctor was saying in a hospital in one of these southern states where they have a ba- very bad uh, rate of people getting the shot, he mm-hmm. said, I can't tell you how many people are in here. And just before we intubate them, because mm-hmm. when you intubate them, they got about a, nine, a 20% chance of surviving. That's, that's, that means you're going off to la-la land, okay? Yeah. Uh, he said, just before we intubate them, they most of them say, "Can you give me the vaccine now? Will that will that cure it?" And he says, "I have to tell them it's a little too late, pal. You know, it's a little too, it's late, too late now." Late. So yeah. you know, 
They probably said if you weren't a Republican, you would have got the shot. Well, I don't think just I, we Wall can't just say they're just Republicans. You know, you're right. Uh, but let's say they're just stupid. <clears throat> And uh, I, when, when people like Rand Paul do what they do, they're endangering the population. Absolutely. And they shouldn't be allowed to do so. I mean, yeah, we believe in freedom of speech, but do we have freedom of speech? It's like yelling fire in a crowded theater, you know? Hopefully Rand Paul's in there if it was real. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, yes, uh, John? Did, did you um, see the guys on uh, Fox and Friends? They, they, the clip was going around and one guy, the older guy was going, well, you know, um, it makes sense to get the vaccine. You know, it appears that the only people that are dying are the people that haven't got the vaccine. And the yeah. other guy looks at him and goes, well, that's their choice. Like, you know, oh, well, I mean, I agree with that. It's their choice. Yeah, and so far as I'm concerned, yeah. you know, it's a way of weeding out the stupid, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, yeah. Star, it's Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, natural he selection for free, yeah. the freedom you know that's their freedom you know that's the beauty of it yeah it's a, it, it, you, you have a freedom to be idiotic and stupid you know nobody <laughs> uh, nobody argues with that you know but I, I just I don't understand why these people I mean I saw some one guy who was in the hospital right mm -hmm. and he had had COVID and he was coming out the other side of it and he said, I still wouldn't get the vaccine because it's dangerous. And they, they made the point. They hit, oh, he said, it's dangerous because it is, an, the CDC has only approved it for uh, experimental purposes or whatever that reason was that they emergency gave. Use. Emergency use. Emergency. Emergency. And he said, but what he doesn't realize is all the other drugs we pumped into him come under that same classification. Yeah. But he took them yeah. You know, I saw a thing yeah. uh, today. Apparently, in September, it's supposed to get full approval. It's supposed to get full. So approval. a little ways to go. Well, I mean, yeah. what, what's holding him back now? You know, the guy was like, "Oh, you know, we have to, re you know, keep our integrity. Otherwise, you know, we lose that." So I don't know. He's trying I, to I, it. I have certain reservations about the CDC. Uh, sometimes I think they're a little too careful. I mean, let's face yeah. it. Let's. Let, uh, it was like when AIDS happened. And they had all these AIDS drugs, and the CDC says, well, well first we have to test them. And mm -hmm. people said, test them, test them on us, because we're going to die unless we get something that works. And they played hell getting the CDC to allow them to try these drugs. And a lot of them did help. I mean, today, huh. you get AIDS, you don't die. Okay? Pretty much. Uh, but... Uh, you know, I mean, the CDC has always been that way. And I think it's, uh, get me something too, will you, Matt? Uh, <laughs> I, I, need a, I need a sugar high. I'm, uh, I'm a little, oh, little yeah. bit sugar. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, I'll hey thank one. you. I appreciate it. Uh, Cookies and milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, licorice. Oh. Yes, licorice. My favorite. You know, red I, I can't, I can't. Isn't there a law <laughs> that you were not allowed if you were trying to kill yourself? You could, you could actually go to prison for doing that. Is that true? I'm trying to remember. Uh, in some states, I think it was illegal to commit suicide. So if you're yeah. going to do it, you better be good at it. Well, aren't, aren't <laughs> they really doing the same thing? Well. No, they're taking people with them because they uh, don't it, get sick and other people get this sick. This one guy said something very important. The guy that said... Uh, uh, you know, he had COVID. He was in the hospital. He was deathly ill. Coming out the other side, he said, as soon as I'm out of here, I'm going out and getting a, va a vaccination. I'm going to get the full course of vaccinations. And they, then they asked him, well, why didn't you have it before? And he said, well, I read on Facebook it wasn't good yeah. for you. You know, somewhere, somehow, these social you know, and all the, all these social uh, uh, platforms will tell you now, oh, well, we really should have done something about that. Yeah, and you should have done something about Trump, and he should have done something about this, and he should have been done something about that. Um, I mean, it, uh, how about Zoom? When they see that somebody has signed up mm -hmm. with the name A Nigger Hater, 
Mm. Shouldn't they do the job of blocking it rather than me? That was my point. Yeah, yeah, you said that. And they really should. These companies don't want to do more than they have to do until they are intimidated into doing it. And that's the problem. I mean, they probably would have let them in if they said they did. Yes, uh, Charlene. I was watching The View today, and they say that um, I think Facebook is going to do a thing where if something's racist like that, it will like wash it away. Like, you know, it won't go through because um, they were all complaining, you know, those women on there that Mm -hmm. um, Sunny is, you know, African American or whatever, Spanish or something. But she says she gets a lot of hate, um, like trolling and stuff like that because of her color and things Mm -hmm. like that. So she says she's very happy now that she won't have to be subjected to all this hate because it, it upset her a lot, she said. Well, you know something, I, 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 I hate to say to her that you, you don't accept the hate. That, that's not something you do. But you have to let it roll off like water off your back, mm. you know, because it goes with the territory. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to be on television? You want to have political comments? You're going to get people saying horrible yeah, if things. If she can't stand the heat, she should get out of the kitchen a little bit. Well, right I mean, you, you know, it's just something mm-hmm. you should expect. Right. You know. Uh, but Megan McCain said she thought it was a good idea too, though. Yeah, uh, and she's leaving the View, right? <laughs> is she? She said, "Yeah, she's getting off." I think I don't know why, but mm. her and Whoopi don't get along or something. I don't know. Mm. It's too bad. I don't know if that's why, but yeah, it is very stupid. Well, I mean, I think if I'm going to have somebody on that show as a right winger, Megan McCain is probably as good as anybody. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, uh, Alan. Okay, now that we got off COVID for a minute. Uh, your show last night with you and Phil, and you, you, I, like I said, I think you'll find this funny. Why did you spend $900 to fly first class? Well, today he flew American and his flight got delayed out of Denver. And it got delayed and it got delayed and they moved him from first class on the aircraft that wasn't gonna leave to United in the back of a 757 <laughs> and he is Pissed. And he's still paying the eight hundred bucks. Nine hundred. Nine hundred yeah. bucks. Oh. And he's he's right now. It looks like, according to the the little air thing, he's like over Las Vegas or something like so, that. Can you imagine he's, he's got a little kid next to him. Nine hundred dollars. <laughs> Nine hundred dollars. You should go direct. He flies to Phoenix and back through Phoenix. You're kidding! Wow. Yeah, I mean, and first. Well, yeah, my feeling is, look, he's going. He's going to Denver. If you're going to go to Denver, you don't buy a first class ticket. Is that a long flight? You know, how long does it take? Like an hour. Two hours. An hour and a half. Two hours. Yeah, I mean, you can't sit in a cramped seat for two and a half hours just so that you can pay nine hundred dollars for a less cramped seat. Well, he he told me the reason he got up in first class was because he could go to the bathroom and use it five or six times without anybody in line. He's gonna clog the toilet. You know something, if you had an emergency and you were starting to piss your pants, as could be his problem, okay? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not okay. making fun of him. I, he has you no know, prostate. I came close to having that same problem. Oh, really? Right. You know, um, but all I'm saying is, then, then you just tell them, listen, I have a prostate problem. I have my prostate removed. I need to go to a bathroom fast. They say, go right up, use the first class. That's okay. what they'd say. Right. Absolutely. And if they didn't, then you just take out a cup and pee in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> really? Just you piss your pants. Who cares? Yeah. Excuse me while I whip this out. What? Excuse me while I whip this out. Yeah. So what is he flying? Nine hundred dollars to come back? It was nine hundred dollars round, round trip. trip. Oh, I was gonna. That's still because he likes to, he likes to say I went first class. You well, know, that's what it is. hey, okay. if you're flying to Europe, yeah, you know, pay yeah, whatever right. it takes to right. be comfortable. Seems when I go to China, it takes uh, how long does it take to get to China? It took about I think fourteen hours, wow. maybe sixteen <laughs> hours, and sixteen wow. hours back, and it's a nonstop flight, you know, yeah, uh, you and uh, but it's a little roomier just because it happened to be a Chinese flight and they had pretty old planes that have a lot of room you know that uh, and uh, I, I took it and I didn't have any problem you know I didn't buy first class we got in the seat 
I took a Valium and I fell asleep. Yes, uh, Matt. I have to say, when I flew from Texas to California on my way here, flying sucks right now. I mean, <clears throat> wearing a mask on the plane is just torture. I don't want to do it anymore. I know we have to wear them, but I don't have to fly. Um, it's miserable. Southwest sucks. I, my flight was, um, my connecting flight was uh, delayed. I didn't get in until like two in the morning or something. Um, and that whole thing of um, that whole cattle call of how you line up with the numbers, you know, like a bunch of little sheep. Listen, get rid I, of that. Matt, Matt, I don't want to sound like an old fart, but when I was a kid <laughs> and I started taking airlines, it was like a fancy day out. Everybody on the plane, all the men on the plane wore suits. All the yeah. women were yeah. wearing fine, they were, they're finery. Okay. Gloves, gloves and hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then they would they'd serve you great food, you know, great little lunch, you know, on the plane, you know. And you're in coach. Right. You're in coach. You're not in first class. You're in coach. And know you're not nice And they treat you. Would they would treat you? You know, everybody would get on the plane and let's get you on here as fast as possible and so on. And now they treat you like <clears throat> absolute cattle. You know, yeah. Well, have you seen him? Hmm? There's a way around it. Wait, 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 let, let Matt talk. Yes, Matt. Oh, I was going to say, if, you're, if your flight is delayed and you change planes, mm -hmm. you lose your slot in line. You know, you're, you know, you get your reservation early, mm -hmm. like a good little boy. Yeah. Um, I had like B1 or something. Yeah. And I ended up in the very, very last row because I, I get kicked out. At least I got onto a flight, but I lose my, uh, my, my spot because I had to change planes oh. to a different plane than I was supposed to be on. See? And um, so it was just miserable. Even though that that final leg was only like an hour, you can't uh, you, you can't retract your seat at all. And you arrive at the bathroom, people are constantly well, going by. It's just miserable. Yeah, but you know they weren't getting our business for the better part of a year and a half. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and and you would think that once they got our business back, they'd start treating us a little better. But no, they treat us the same yeah. shitty way they treated us before the pandemic started. Worse, <laughs> you know. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, Alan. So I've flown Southwest a lot, and I don't like cattle call. A friend of mine that's a pilot, for, well, used to be a pilot for them, said there's a trick. <clears throat> you go to the ticket counter before the flight and say you're handicapped or you're <laughs> old and you need extra time getting down the ramp. You're first on the aircraft, even if you bought the cheapest seat on the aircraft. Oh, well, the best thing that happened to me ever okay it's the worst thing that happened to marjorie but it was the best thing that happened to me is we went to europe and during the trip to europe her 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 back got worse and worse and worse and worse to the point where she had uh crutches you know that she was using in order to get around i mean it got that bad i mean i couldn't see half the towns we were going to because she couldn't leave the hotel room well, oh, that's sad. I left without her. But, you know, I mean, the fact was. Oh, what a prick. Well, no, no. She said, go, enjoy it. You know, <laughs> like she she never saw Sienna. She just saw the inside of a hotel room. Okay. Oh, One day I rented it. I took the car and I put her in it. And I drove her around in Sienna to let her see it a little bit from the car. But anyway, she, she was in that bad of shape. Going back. We said, well, you know, she's got this problem. And immediately they said, wheelchair, please. And they got a wheelchair. And every flight we went on, we were the first ones on. They wheeled her in. And when we got to a, a, a place where we had to go from one part of the airport to another part of the airport, they had a special bus for us to take us there. They took yep. us up to the front of the line. We barely had to go through <clears throat> customs. We just had to kind of show we didn't have any guns or anything. On we go, you yeah. know, roll her right through. So if you ever have a, a real problem, just wear crutches. <laughs> you know, you don't even, most airlines take your word. You tell them you're handicapped and need, you have a bad leg, they'll take your word for it. No. Although, uh, but, uh, yeah. why didn't you just tell them you're Alex Bennett? They would have given you first class. No, <laughs> uh, that's the worst way to get on a plane. <laughs> Yes. It uh, seems like the policy is being abused because when you go now, by the time they let on families with kids, the military, the handicapped, there's like 50 people already on the plane. Southwest <laughs> lets you buy your way into those first rows. 50 bucks. 
Yeah, but or, or 25 years. Wait a minute. The, no, the first rows are the last to board. No, what, no what it's I just by group. Is, what I meant well, but, but I'm group. saying the group, they usually Sorry. start with the back. Sorry, I misspoke. No, group. no, no. And, and they you, get, like, you have group A, B, and C. Right. A gets on first, but they can sit wherever there's an empty seat. Wherever they want, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can yeah. buy your way into the I don't eight. know. It's been so long since I've flown on an airplane that I haven't had to put up with any of this crap. They have jet engines yeah. now, Alex. Do they really? <laughs> Sorry. Even if you pay the extra money, by the time you get on, all those pre-board people have already taken all the good seats. So yeah. it's really this is ridiculous. I don't give a crap. If I'm going on a flight, I just, you know, I'll take a, a like a Valium or a, a, a Xanax. I'm just put myself out. Right. You know, and I just I just sleep through the whole damn thing. Yes, Jeff. I just uh, came through Atlanta, mm -hmm. and that is the worst place. What were you taking, Delta? World. Delta. It's terrible. It's just jammed with a million people. You, it was so far that you didn't even know where you were going to get out of the place. Wow. I don't well, know. They say that's the most that's the most confusing airport uh, in the country, I believe. I'm trying. Right? To, you know something. You know what I found was a good airline though. When I every time I've taken it, now I don't know if it's changed, and some of you may have done it, and I you can tell me differently. Virgin. Virgin is a. What you're going? No, Charlie. I say I've never been on. Oh, you've Virgin. never been on Virgin. I, I haven't either. Uh, beautiful, beautiful interiors. Uh, good service solid service at least when i went and this was many years ago but they were they were considered the best in the business that way you know um I, I just read though that they i i just read because uh what's his face was on the news with his space crap yeah. uh, he he sold that airline yeah but, uh, no no the other the other he did oh, sell it yeah he sold it <laughs> yeah, yeah he said he sold that too i think they said alaska air so there there is no more virgin airline yeah but he does own virgin galactic yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I flew on version once, and yes, it was a very nice plane. By the way, modern. the more I've been thinking about the Bezos thing, to begin with, have you ever noticed that the Amazon logo looks like a penis? Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, kind of like this and bald on the they, top. They, yeah. they tried with it. With, no, they tried with a, uh, uh, to do a Nike swoosh, but make it look like a penis. All right? You saw the rocket he took off the in, rocket, didn't you? It looks more like a penis. I mean, it's got a crown and it's got the shaft and the whole thing. But last night I was complaining, and I will complain again tonight about this. How dare this guy call these people who went up in that thing astronauts? Right. You know, I mean, that's going to be a real that'd be a real blow to Neil Armstrong or John yeah. Glenn right, or right. any of the people who are floating around right now up in the uh, up at the, in the space lab, uh, you know, the space station. Uh, I mean, these people work in space; they know how to fly those things to a certain extent. Uh, and and all these guys did they they were riders on an amusement ride. There's not a, one control. It's just completely autonomous, and you just sit your ass in a seat. That's all you do. Well, that's yeah. what you do with, when you're going on a roller coaster. Yeah. It's the yeah. same Absolutely. thing. So how yeah. dare you cheapen the name of astronauts and yeah. the accomplishments these brave men and women have had over the years in, in doing what is essentially very dangerous work? How dare you besmirch them by calling yourself astronauts and giving everybody little wings who went on the flight? You know, it says, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Alex, yes, uh, Tony. I don't want to sound like an ageist because I watched it. That yeah. woman, I know she could have been an astronaut. <laughs> she was 81. I'm not being an ageist. No, that's I, fine. She's got braver than me. That's Wouldn't fine. that be dangerous for her? I mean, that how big could it have been? Well, if they threw but her to begin plane. with, she had been an astronaut. She was, yeah, that's right. Yeah. She had been. She, she had astronaut. been an astronaut. She had always she had always been passed up for uh, flight status. Okay. Uh, uh, now that uh, somebody on CBS the other day said, and no women really went into space, and I'm thinking, then who died in the Challenger? Sally Ride. Oh, Sally Ride died in the Challenger. Christy McCullough. Yeah. Oh, Christy McCullough. 
That's right. another one. Was, that was big there girl was girl. another one. There was another one also. Though. No, but Sally Ride didn't. Sally Ride. Yeah, she went into space. Yeah. Sally Ride she was went okay. Into space well, also. I know she went into space, but yeah. didn't she die in the Challenger? Was it, it was Christy McCall? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Christy McCullough was the teacher that went up yeah. on the teacher. challenge. Exactly. There were there were two women on the challenge. Right? 1986. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, and I think there was another woman that got killed in the uh, in the other one. That yeah, in, in Atlanta, Atlanta, whatever it was. The one that was coming Columbia. back. The Columbia. Columbia. Yeah. Oh, that's Columbia. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I, 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 I this is not like this is the first woman to go up. You know. I mean, it's just, it, it, but it just, it bothered me. It just really bothered me. And it was such a stupid space flight anyway. This is what they do for tests. Let it go up a little bit. Let it come down. Let's see how it does. You know, let's not really go up there. I mean, it's like, like they, not like they went to the space station. You know, it's not like they, uh, they circled in one orbit. They didn't even do that. Didn't they went up, up, they came down. I was watching. Uh, I was watching it on uh, with Jim Cray with that that channel. I forgot the channel, the Money Channel, and yeah. they were making yeah, it sound like, yeah. And you know what they were making it sound like? This is like a step ahead for aviation. Oh, no. How is this going to benefit anybody? No, nobody. You want to talk about space ahead? SpaceX is doing the hard lifting. You know, mm -hmm. they're doing all the hard lifting. Uh, yes, mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Alan had his hand up. Look yeah. at Alan. I, I just I just wanted to respond to Tony's. This is this is not sarcastic, but she was an astronaut, the gal that went up at 81 years old. She is in the last probably quarter of her life, and she wanted to go up and see what's oh, going on. Like. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it was fine. You know, I, I think mean, so too. they also sent up a kid. <clears throat> you know, uh, he had to miss his dental appointment, but he, uh, he yeah, he went up. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, that you know, the reason he got to go up is because another guy who did pay paid twenty eight, uh, what it, how much was twenty eight million dollars was it? Yeah, to go yeah. on it, he because it was a raffle. They wanted they were raffling it off for. Yeah. You know. I heard they called Alex Bennett, but he didn't answer his phone. But anyway, <laughs> th this guy couldn't go. He said, "I have." A, it turns out, I have another appointment. I mean, come on, what kind of a lame answer is that? I've got another I appointment. I'm scared to go up. What? SpaceX, I don't have the, I don't have SpaceX wants you, chair. SpaceX wants you yeah. to go to Mars? I mean, what? Yeah, another, another appointment. Another well, I mean, you, oh, you, of course, you don't want to miss your dental appointment because they'll charge you for it, you know? But they, they kept the $28 million. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, uh, Charlene. Well, thank you, Alex, for putting your finger on what was wrong with it because I knew there was something wrong and last night and tonight you know what you've just said yeah I that's right I, I knew that well, I didn't like it's it just I've always, it loved, no I've always loved space travel and what space mm -hmm. entails and the future of space I mean the only thing that bothers me is I'm so old I probably won't see a lot of these milestones like getting to Mars I think right. I'll, if I live a couple two years I'll get to see us land on the moon you know mm -hmm. again all right this time they'll right. take you to Mars. Hmm? Anyway, I mean the point is uh, that that uh, uh, you know it's a lot of uh, I I have a lot of love for that. And when Bezos, if Bezos did it and said, "Look at what we did, wasn't this fun?" Blah 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 blah. But no, <laughs> I, I, here's your astronaut pin. I mean, yeah, come on, I'm right. sorry. Oh, the thing that pissed me <laughs> off is thank you, Amazon customers, for paying. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he yes. Said that. yeah. yeah. right. Oh man, that frosted. And by me. the way, the same day he said that, I got a thing from Amazon saying they're changing their terms and conditions. I saw the same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah I got that too. Ab yeah. About returns. <clears throat> okay, is that how he's going to pay for this thing? <laughs> you know. At least what are they, cha what are they changing? Because I saw that email and I just deleted it. It was just it's just something about if you now if before you could like just appeal to them if you had a complaint. Now you have to go to court to complain. Yeah. Oh really? I deleted right? it too, man. Well, I you can't yeah, like, go I'm going to go hire a lawyer. I'm going to spend <laughs> many thousands of dollars to yeah. get my 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 book back from <laughs> you know from Amazon. <laughs> You kidding me? But it seemed like, oh well, I had all this money I put out for the rocket, and we have to find a way to save money. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Jeff Bezos. But yeah, I, mean, I I agree with you, Matt. I saw it. Delete. 
I'm not going to yeah. read all the garbage. Uh, yeah. But the thing is that, you know, I mean, they didn't do anything. It's not nothing for the future of space. It's only something for space tourism, which is meant to make Jeff Bezos money. money. He's already got $100 million worth of tickets sold for the next yeah. rockets. And you know one of them's going to explode because they've only oh, sent up three of these things successfully. I heard yeah, they, they have a, like a one in like two hundred something chance they they can have a problem. So it's yeah, be, uh, yeah. I it's hope that Trump's on that seat. Yeah, on yeah. that flight. Well, uh, Charlie, what do you think about this? Because I know that you 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 love space and the whole future of space and so on. Well, I mean, I agree with you that that the uh, they're besmirching the name as the term astronaut by calling these people astronauts but i hmm? i would love to go up in the space but i have no way i'm ever going to get 28 million dollars so well it's only going to be two hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, let's uh let's start a gofundme thing for charlie so he can go up so he can go to space i just uh you know i just i just figured it's just like uh uh it just bothered me just really bothered me and and taking all this credit and stuff because he's trying to put himself ahead of Elon Musk, but he yeah, hasn't yeah. put himself ahead of Elon Musk. Elon Musk is sending up rockets all the time. He's sending them to the yeah. space station. He's sending them up and releasing uh, satellites. This yeah. guy has just simply got a penis-shaped rocket that goes up and takes people <laughs> on a roller coaster ride. It would have been great when it got up to altitude if it started squirting white stuff out the yeah, top. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> They didn't even do what the Astro Chimp did. I mean, what? Remember the yeah, Astro Chimp? They, they did an orbit, right? With the chimp. Yeah, that's right. The Chimp did an orbit. Well, this yeah. wasn't an orbital flight. The yeah. No. This wasn't an orbital flight at all. And um, uh, it, uh, you know, I mean. Uh, like a penis. It got up and then it went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unclimatic. But uh, I, you know, I mean, look, look what Bezos has been accomplishing. It's incredible. He's got a whole plan to get people to Mars and be on Mars, live yeah. on Mars. Please the, take Trump as your uh, first passenger. What were you going to say, Matt? The, the other thing that he mentioned was, oh, my vision is that we can offload all of our factories and all this production stuff, offload that out into the world, and then the, the blue ball can stay nice and green. How the hell are you going to do that? Hmm. That, that would take a thousand years. <laughs> well, uh, 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 the dream that Bezos has, uh, not Bezos, but uh, 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 Elon Musk has, is that by the, within the next 50 years, he expects to have a million people on Mars. Really? He come on. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What they're going to do, what they've got to do is we can only go to Mars once every couple of years because there is a point, the, is it the apogee or yeah. the perigee, uh, uh, Charlie? You have to do it when Mars is at its closest point to Is Earth. that the apogee or the perigee? I can't remember. It's I've, called I've, the closest point. Well, yeah, it's the called perigee the is the closest. The, the per it, it's Earth. perigee, closest point to Mars. They could probably go at any time. It's just that it takes longer, much longer. And it's a lot more expensive. And, and a lot, a lot more, more expensive. Fuel. Yeah, so here is, so the plan is this, that he's going to send one up there, take two years to, it takes 18, what is it, how many months does it take? Eight months, nine months, I think. Yeah. I right, used to yeah. hear two years, but I guess they... It's a sure. two-year round trip. Two-year round trip, okay. Anyway, they they take the thing, and they uh, uh, they send it to, to Mars, and then the next one is they're going to send tons of them all to Mars at the same time, a whole yeah. fleet, which yeah. is going to piss the Martians off no end. <laughs> so is his plan then to have everybody procreate on the planet then? Let them well, no, the plan is to, there. to gentrify Mars. That, that, they can, that yeah. they can send that in these in the massive rockets that even got a ton of people and send, just send a whole bunch of them at the same time, okay, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as a fleet. Uh, that will all land on Mars. And then they will use the rockets, which are those big rockets, to live in temporarily until they can set up, until they can set up the, the pods and so on to live in on Mars. And then there's, have you heard this one from? It's like a kind of book. Well, 
uh, here's the way in which uh, 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 Elon Musk has supposed that maybe we can bring an oxygen to Mars. How is he planning to do this? He wants to nuke the polar caps. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not a stupid idea. Not a stupid idea. Listen, at last we've finally gone to a planet we can't ruin. Yeah. Because it's already ruined, all right? <laughs> all we can do is improve it. We can be like uh, the sure. Jews of space. We can take an arid land and grow stuff on it. Um, but uh, he he just has all the... And so far as fuel to get back, mm. we can make fuel out of what is already on Mars because yeah. what Musk is using for fuel now is methane. And there is methane on Mars. Mm. Yeah. Or, or either that, or people could just fart into a jar. You know, that's, that's always make our own methane. Make our own methane. I'm gonna go to Coney Island again. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I, I would listen. If somebody wanted to send me up in that rocket, I would do it in a second. But I wouldn't come back and say, "Hey, I'm an astronaut now." <laughs> yeah. No, no. But I would have. I would have gotten on that rocket the other day. You know, Alex, when I was watching it live with my brother, I was like, can you imagine if this thing blew up? <laughs> well, no, everybody was waiting for it to. Yeah. Right. I I like, so it too. could happen right now. You never know. I wasn't happy. But, you know. Wow, that, well, it'd be bigger, him going up or blowing up. I was just wondering to myself, like, I think blowing up would have been bigger. Oh, oh, yeah. He, we wouldn't hear the end of it. What do you think, Alex? Every, what would like? every hour of every day for the next week would be, oh, Elon Musk. Here's the history of Jeff Bezos. Oh, this, yeah. so let's, let, let's look back on the life of Jeff Bezos, you know, oh, yeah. a pioneer who died for space. Oh, you think God. they would have made jokes, Alex, about him right away, like the delivery or something? You think they would have been all Oh, there would, have, no, there would have been. There already were the Amazon jokes on this flight, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's, it's you know, I just, I, I just, I, I want, I, I just want us to go back and I want us to do what we got to do. And I had somebody again last night on the show, uh, who was it, said, uh, you know, we have so many other things to deal with here on Earth, we should do that mm -hmm. first. And mm -hmm. my argument back was, yeah, the government should do that, but the government isn't doing this. The people who are doing this is private industry. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, that private industry does put money into a lot of good works and so on and so forth. But that's not their job. Their job is to get us into space and to make money out of it. I don't care. If, uh, if, if Elon Musk wants to make money out of space, bless him. You know, just get us there. You know? Do you agree with me, Charlie? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have this without the, the space program. Mm -hmm. Computers were the size of the Empire State Building before a space program well actually yeah, the, the, actually um the, the the space first space capsules that went on had computers in them but it had very little computing right. power your yeah. iphone could have gotten us to mars i mean that's how yeah. powerful it is in comparison <clears throat> to what they had but that's how come we got smaller and smaller computers is because they had to fit them in the spacecraft yeah yeah, yeah, that's how we got the microchip. And there's the EJ, EKGs and stuff that save people's lives in hospitals. Yeah. That came from monitoring the astronauts in space. Yeah. It's also how we got cordless drills. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen. That's because they, they needed a way to do it without a wire. Well, the cordless screwdriver, to me, is the greatest invention of all time. Oh yeah, you know I don't care about today. the invention of the wheel, the, the electric <laughs> screwdriver. Yes, uh, Charlene. Oh, well, it's, getting, agree with... it's getting close to the end. Mm -hmm. I just want to look, Alex. I'm a Nielsen viewer, oh. so oh. I'm watching you right now. You know, and I'm clicking that I'm watching you. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yep. Wow. You think you're getting ratings or something? Well, I don't know. If you say you're watching me, it will. Yeah. Uh, it will. Yeah. You My know. whole family is watching you right now. So you're a Nielsen family? <laughs> yes, I just signed up for that. Yeah. You know, if do you... they pay you for that? Sorry. I'm... Yeah, no. you get paid. Oh, you do. They now? send you little they... checks. Yeah. It's, it's about ten bucks or something, isn't it? Uh... I don't know. I got fifty, and then I got seventy-five. Really? And then I have to wait and see how much more I'm going to get. Do they want a blowjob with that or anything? Or... I didn't get paid a dime. Huh? 
Really? Uh, right. That was volunteer. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I mean, um, what was it that they used to have? They had the people meters. They used to put right. In. But they didn't work out too well for them, I don't think, because it would recognize when there was somebody in the room watching TV, and people would leave the TV set on, and the dog would be sitting there in the room watching <laughs> TV, and they would get credit, you know. Right, right. Uh, -uh. but that's it's terrible, <laughs> you know. Oh, but, Alex, but, one more quick question for you. Sure. I know we're almost over. I'm curious about your eye procedure. Can yeah. you just explain what they're going to do? What they're going to do is they're going to lift the lid up above here. Okay. If you notice my eye, you, do you notice that the lid is covering the eyeball about halfway? Mm -hmm. Well, that, yeah. that, okay. that impedes my vision a bit. And, it, it, you know, if I open up my eyes like this, I can see more. But they're going to they're gonna lift it. They're going to oh. cut it. I've heard of that, it. Alex. And then they're going to do I, the I bottom as well. Mm -hmm. Not the bags, but the, the mm -hmm. bottom lid. And uh, uh, then I will look like uh, somebody beat the crap out of me. What I want to do, what <laughs> I want to do. Well, yeah. no, what I want to uh, do. Are they going to cut it with a scalpel? Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ah, ugh. Well, yeah, well, and they, then from the inside. Well, they say, he said, we don't put you out. But then he said, they're giving me. Uh, 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 Twilight. You, uh, no, Twilight. The Twilight drug, which is uh, mm -hmm. what Michael Jackson was taking. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and and uh, I said, well, cool. You know, that's fine. I mean, well, I know much is happening. He said, no, you'll just be alert enough that when I ask you to open your eyes wide, you will. In other words, I need your cooperation a little bit in this. But he says he's done 2,500 of these things and never had a problem with a single one of them. The only thing that might happen is that uh, he didn't do one equally with the other one. He might have to go back in and redo it a little bit or something. But, you know. Um, uh, but so will you be bandaged up when you get out, you know, so you can't see it all for no, a while? No, 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 no. You can see. But you have to put oh, okay. ice on your ice packs on your eyes constantly for three days. The swelling. For three days, yeah. And wow. and don't uh, take any aspirin. And what was the other thing he said I, d I can't do? Uh, oh, I have, when I sleep, I have to sleep on my back ah, yeah. for three days. And uh, otherwise, I'm good to go. <laughs> Uh, Other than that, you know, I'm, I'm not looking forward to it, but I want to get it over with because I think, you know, it will improve my my vision, you know, and, yeah. it, and things like that, you know, so and I'm always feeling tired because my eyes are oh, mm -hmm. and when I'm lying trying to watch TV, it's, I get have a harder time watching TV because yeah. wait, yeah. will you have stitches? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll look yeah. like Frankenstein's monster before this thing is <laughs> oh, over. Oh, this will be fun. And then when I get, when I'm all black and blue, really black and blue in the beginning, mm -hmm. I want to walk down the street with Marjorie without dark glasses on and make them think she beat the crap out of me. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, hey, listen, everybody. Thank you. Matt, call us more often. You're great. Great having you I here. will try. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Alan, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you very much to Charlie Wallace. Good to see you again. Hope it rains again tomorrow night. Uh, okay. Charlene Martinez, always good to have you here. Uh, uh, and Tony, you know, do it more often. Uh, and John Larkin, thank you so much. You, you have something to say or did you just wave goodbye? Oh, yeah. It's waving goodbye. And Jeff, oh, always good to have you here, too. Anyway, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me give them a big wave goodbye, and they can give a big wave goodbye at me. Okay? There we go. And that's it, everybody. I hope you wave back at them, everybody. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the, uh, the you know, the, the, the intersection. And then we'll be back here uh, again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, all right? And be sure to wear a mask. And by the way, if you're going to call Jack, he's on Skype at uh, GabNet Live, okay? Have a nice night, everybody. Bye-bye.